Hello there everyone, Henry here. Today we're going to go over developmental dysplasia of the hip. Developmental dysplasia of the hip, or DDH, is a congenital malformation that either results in dislocation of the femoral head from the acetabulum or underdevelopment of the acetabulum. In this video, I'm going to go over um, briefly anatomy. I'm also going to over, go over the protocol and uh, techniques of performing the ultrasound. And then at the end, we'll go over some pathology. Okay, so here we have a diagram of the pediatric hip. And here you can see all the bony landmarks of the pelvis. You have the ilium. You also have the acetabulum, where the femoral head goes into. The ischium. And then the pubis. And right here in the middle is the pubic symphysis. Typically when you're scanning, you're, scanning, you're seeing the, the ilium and the acetabulum in a horizontal plane. I've... Uh, Rotated the image and put it here against the, the iliac wing so you can see the relation from the ultras the relation of the ultrasound image to the sonographic image. Here's another view of the hip in cross section. Here we have the femoral head at the end of the femur in the socket in the acetabulum. Um, this type of joint is known as a ball and socket joint. Obviously, you can see the circular formation of the femoral head. It allows a, a large degree of rotation for walking. This joint is meant to support a lot of weight. So naturally, any underdevelopment or hypoplasia of the acetabulum will lead to walking difficulties in the future. Okay, so here's a coronal or longitudinal view of the hip. Right here, this echogenic line is the ilium. The ilium dips down to become the acetabulum, uh, the bony acetabulum. Here is the femoral head. You can see all the little interfaces showing the spongy bone. This is the labrum here. And then this is the ischium. Here is a transverse view. And you can see the femoral head or the ball of the femur again in the acetabulum. Just posterior to it, you can see the ischium. And here you can see a beginning of the femoral shaft. And this patient is still young, so it's still kind of a cartilaginous. Scanning. Indications for hip sonography are abnormal physical exam. A family history of hip dysplasia, breach presentation, oligohydramnios, and also if there is a known hip dysplasia that they're following. In order to do this exam, you will need a linear transducer. Um, for bigger babies, um, you can use a 9. Uh, if the babies are really small, you can use a 15. The exam should typically be done after one month. It's better if the baby is uh, at least one month to um, discount the possibility of getting physiologically immature hips, which are normal. Those by three months typically uh, go back to normal. You will want the patient to be in a lateral decubitus position. Um, this allows for better angling of your transducer and for manipulation as well. Uh, you may perform this exam with a helper, and they can do the manipulations while you do the, the scanning. Um, but I believe it is preferable to learn how to do it yourself. Um, you do the manipulations and the scanning by yourself and, you know, obviously the, the cine loop button after you're done doing the manipulation. It's definitely difficult and most people prefer to do it with a helper. We perform um, adduction and abduction of the patient's legs. These movements are called the Barlow and Ortolani maneuvers and these are done during a physical examination by the pediatrician to rule out dislocation of the hips. This dynamic technique is invaluable, as you can see subluxation in real time. While scanning, we also take a pair of measurements called alpha and beta angles of the acetabulum, um, developed by Graf. We draw a line across the ilium horizontally, and then two other lines that dissect this line through the acetabulum and labral areas. Here you get the alpha angle. And here you get the beta angle. A normal alpha angle is 60 degrees or above, and a normal beta angle is considered 55 degrees or below. The typical protocol consists of a series of coronal and transverse images. In the coronal plane, you want to scan your baby, whether they're in supine or lateral decubitus, which is more preferable. You want to scan the leg in a neutral position. That's just the body's natural lay. You may need to measure in this plane, depending on your institution. Uh, a lot of institutions vary in their protocol. Some will have you measure in neutral, others in adduction, some places in both. 
but it all depends on where you work. Um, so you want to take your adduction images as well, and then your abduction images in, in coronal. After you're done, you want to take your transverse images and do the same neutral, transverse, abduction, and abduction. Here's a classification system for hip types, also developed by graph. Type 1 is normal. That would be alpha angle 6 degrees or more. Beta angle 55 degrees or less. A subtype of 2 would be 2A. And that's an alpha angle from 50 to 60 degrees. In a baby that's 3 months or less, this is considered physiologically immature and will most likely resolve on its own. They'll refer for follow-up. And then there's varying degrees of abnormal. If the baby's 3 months or older, you have a mild version, which is the same... 50 to 60 degrees alpha. And then you have two other levels of increased severity uh, up to uh, acetabular, uh, very shallow acetabulum. There's also inverted labrum. Then the last type would be uh, type 4, and this is just a dislocated um, hip. The acetabulum may be normal, but the hip or the femoral head is completely outside of the acetabulum. When scanning, it's important to try to get the, the ilium as horizontal as possible, perpendicular to the beam. This can sometimes be a little hard. Uh, you'll have to tilt your transducer, either anterior or uh, more posterior, depending on how your, uh, your angle is. If the baby's moving a lot, this also may be a little difficult, but it is achievable. Um, even on this image where the angle is a little, a little off, you will still get uh, normal angles for the measurements, but it is always good to try to get the image as straight as possible. When scanning older babies, you will often see this echogenic structure in the center of the femoral head. This is a normal structure. It's just the ossification center. Um, as the baby gets older, the, cartil the cartilaginous portion of the femoral head ossifies more and more. So here we have four images from normal to abnormal. A is a normal hip at uh, 60 degrees or above. B, if measures between 50 and 60 degrees, uh, but the baby is less than three months, it is considered physiologically immature. As you can see, it looks pretty normal. Um, the corner there of where the ilium meets the acetabulum is a little rounded off. C is considered a mild dysplasia, anywhere from 43 to 50 degrees alpha, alpha angle. And then in D, you can see some significant acetabular dysplasia. Uh, you can see just by looking at that that it's abnormal. The acetabulum is very shallow. And in real time, you may be able to see the femoral head moving um, side to side. On this side-by-side -side image, you can see the right is normal. The acetabulum is well-formed. And on the left, the acetabulum is shallow. And also, the femoral head appears to be smaller when compared to the right. So it's a little dysplastic as well. In this image, you can see the femoral head is completely outside of the acetabular ca uh, cavity. Um, the acetabular rim is flattened. Um, this is a graft type 4 hip. The angle can be either unmeasurable or, or will be way below 43. Well, that pretty much wraps this baby up. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. There will be more in the future. I'm Henry. Take care. <laughs>